Hi everyone, it's Agnes and I've got another interview for you today. Jason is here with me and Jason is the last man to be interviewed for the Valentine series. <laughs> so hello oh, Jason. I'm hoping you're saving the best till last. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> not that I'm at the end of the, you know, end of the line. No, no, you're not at the end um, <laughs> for, for a bad reason. We need um, another one. Bring him on. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, thank you for coming today. So, hey, pleasure. Well, welcome. And, you know, as we very casually interview people on this channel, it is to share ideas and to also give people inspiration and hopefully give people a bit of relief about mm -hmm. what's going on in their own lives. A lot of my channel watches because of relationships and because of challenges in relationships. So, and a lot of people really want a specific person or they want a relationship. So last Valentine's day was about the women. This Valentine's day, it's about the men. So to start off, so people get to know you a little bit, can you share firstly where you are and also a bit about your, you know, where you're from? Okay. So I'm currently in Kensington in London. So it's a lovely place. It's a nice place to be and I recommend it for anybody. So I've had a bit of a journey because my background is my father's Jamaican, my mum's English. So okay. I was born in the UK. We moved back to Jamaica for a while, then came back to the UK again. So having those mixed cultures in a household is, uh, is really, really cool. And my parents had a great relationship. You know, my mother's actually from Cornwall. So the accents, you probably hear a little bit in how I talk, um, a little bit of London sort of mixed in. So it's a UK mix with a Jamaican twist as well. <laughs> nice, nice, lovely. I think that's the great thing. The thing I love about London is just how you just see different coloured faces. Oh, yeah different colored just there's just so much mixed in together which yeah. you know i think is such a bonus for the people that are here people live amongst each other and and share their food and share their cultures and that is definitely one of the wonderful things about london yeah it's yeah. a good cosmopolitan melting pot that's for it sure is. it really is <laughs> it, it is really. yeah so we're going to start with some just really basic thoughts of you well not your thoughts are basic my questions are going to be basic about valentine's day i think women really don't know what men think about this stuff and it's kind of a hot button in relationships because i do a lot of coaching and i mm -hmm. hear what a lot of people say and it causes a lot of conflict so i think hearing what you have to say about what do you really think about it and mm -hmm. what part has it played in your relationships up until now okay well i'm a fan of valentine's day okay i absolutely, absolutely love it and i think it's a great day i like giving yeah so for me to have a day where i can just you know treat my woman and actually do some real nice special things is, is great i mean yep i get it we do it all year round of course you yeah know, i think little small gestures gifts thoughtful things etc but to have a day as well, why not? Why not treat them? Why not treat your woman if you, if you want to, or your partner or whoever yeah. it is for that, for that special day as well? Yeah. But the key, the key is, into, is into actually what does that person want? What mm. do they think is that special day? It might not be big gestures. And I did a little bit of research too. <laughs> okay. So I asked some women, I was like, right, Valentine's Day for you. What would be a good Valentine's Day for you? Because I'm a guy, so I'm a yeah. fix it. So I'm like, <laughs> big gestures, big things, boom, you know, everything, fireworks going off. And, you, and the, obviously, your partner's going, hmm, not sure if I really wanted that, you know? Yeah. So it's, so it's asking, asking the question. So I asked yeah. uh, a few, few women, a few girls about what they would like. And surprisingly enough, it, it wasn't about the big gestures. It was about thoughtful gestures. Mm. It was about, you know, how you listened, what you picked up on and small things. I mean, to me, if somebody buys me my favorite chocolate bar, yeah. it's like they had that thought process. Yes. They were like, they were thinking about me. And yeah. just that realization that, hang on, they had an initial thought. They then went out their way to get it. They obviously went and purchased it 
they've brought it home in the anticipation that they wanted to give something to you, do something nice. Yes. And that to me is one of those small gestures, which is amazing. So mm. it's for guys tips, it's listening. It really is listening, but doing some research and preparation for this. Don't just wait for the day. Yes. Try and get some, you know, cause we're into, cause we're into fix it. We don't necessarily always ask all the questions. Mm. So to just listen out and think, mm, okay, well, what does she like? What does she want? You know, what is she into? Maybe ask some open-ended questions. Oh, what have your friends said about Valentine's Day? What do you think about that? What, do you, what would you actually like? Mm. And get some of this information and then set the day up. But yeah. set, set it up. Do that, mm. do, that, do that planning as well. So I, I like to do things like that. So I like, I'm into Valentine's Day. I'm like, Gee, yeah, okay. Wow, you're in the, you're in the <laughs> point 0.1%, I can tell I know, you. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But who doesn't want to feel special? Yes, yes, Who true. doesn't want to, I mean, you want to feel true. special all year round, of course you do. Yeah. But why not have that day, you know, so that, so that your, your partner can go, yeah, you know, he did this, he did that. Why not get some extra points? Yes. <laughs> I think too, like when you do the research, say five months before, and then the person forgets. That's I think right. That's when it's really good because then they really get a surprise. They mention something. You ask sort of a casual question. Oh, what do you yeah. think about that? Not yeah. knowing that they're priming yeah. you for Valentine's Day or for a yes. Day or whatever. That's really exciting. I think that's especially a, when yeah, when they say, "I can't believe you remembered that." Yes. Oh my God, you really remembered that. Yeah. I didn't even think you were listening. That's true. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, to get um, those bonus points, mm. and I think that really builds uh, trust. Yes. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. Because yeah. when you listen to somebody, you make them feel important. Mm. And you know, if you can, if you can really give that to somebody, knowing that they're listening, because there's no books on listening. Mm. There's no courses on listening. I think it's an art. <laughs> it really is. And it needs to be nurtured. You know, two ears, one mouth. That yeah. needs to be nurtured. Yeah. You know, because um, my background, I studied the female brain and the male brain. So obviously okay. two, different, two different perspectives. Yes. And the communication from women is obviously far greater than it is from a guy. So it's kind of really getting into that communication pattern and trying to understand you know, and get that good communication. And that comes with good listening. Mm. So I've kind of picked up some of these tips along Lovely. the way. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So what <laughs> Not, did you, talking about studying the male brain and the female brain, what did you study for the listeners? So my degree, my academic background's in psychology. Yeah. So, and then I did clinical application of like psychotherapy and I'm a hypnotherapist as well. Okay. NLP practitioner. And I've even did Reiki. But um, I mixed that all, combined that in with the body. So I qualified yeah. as a personal trainer too. Yeah. So it's really mind, body, business, yeah. you know, how the whole thing works together, really. Because it really does, you know, the mind yes. and body works together. It so, certainly um, does. Certainly. Yeah. Does. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I like to try and get things right, as right as I can be. You know? That's great. That's great. I think um, the more you learn and well, you usually learn because you've gone through some painful something, whether, mm -hmm. whether it's yeah. around relationships, money, job, health, whatever it is. When you go through those things yourself and then you learn something, whether it's formal study or you're learning on the internet or reading books or whatever, and you start to get relief, I think the more you get into your own personal journey, you really see how the mind body is totally connected yeah. on every yeah. level. Definitely. And, yeah. And the emotions, the emotions play a big part in disease. They play a big part in, you know, that whole thing of what you project out is what you mm -hmm. get a photocopy and you bring back. So yeah. 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 I've definitely um, been on a journey as well so it all started off with i was in engineering i was like a trainee draftsman yeah and i touched on some law yes. then i went into sports modeling so i did that yeah. in london so that yes. was kind of exciting and then yeah. went into sales and marketing and it was the sales which led me into the psychology the wow. communication part of things really yeah so that's when i got into sort of really into um mind body 
Mm. And uh, and that that yeah, that was uh, that was really intriguing because it wasn't a communication is quite a skill. And in sales, yeah. it can be seen as manipulation, but I took it for the communication side of things. Yes. And really how, how we communicate. And it comes back to, again, you know, Valentine's Day. It's like you're across the table. How mm. are you communicating? Mm. You know, it is the two ears, one mouth. It's asking those sort of interesting questions on really trying to get to the depth of what the other person's needs and wants and desires are. You know, that, yeah. that rich communication. Mm. And what I, what I find out is, is when you ask a question, it's not until you're three, four, five sentences deep in a response that you actually get the true subconscious sort of, you know, uh, you admit that and you give that, you elicit those real, real good details on what that person really means and what they want to get across to you. Mm. So, because we're, we're so loaded in, we hear something immediately, we want to respond. Yeah. So now once we've got that response in our head, we might cut off from listening because we're so busy into, right, I want to say something exciting yeah. as well. It's yeah. not like you're being rude, but you yeah. just want to be exciting and get, respond to what they've just said. Mm. So it really is about taking that mental note and mm. then listening, listening, listening until three or four, five sentences into the response, waiting for it and then coming back with something. Yeah. yeah. So if you can enrich that, communication that interaction yeah you know that would be great because i think yeah. sometimes the skill of conversation is this you know it's kind of uh, disappearing too i saw my nephew and niece they got married yeah and they, they were on facebook and one's my you know i love my hubby wubby and the other one's like i love my wifey wifey what it didn't realize was they were at a dinner table, a romantic dinner for two, sat across from each other, but one's on their mobile phone, the other one's on their mobile phone. Mm. I'm like, conversation is now broken down. I think it was Einstein that said modern social activity is going to break it down. Yes. So it yes. needs, you know, when you can get an opportunity to have a real life conversation as well, it's good. And Valentine's yeah. Day is that day. Is an opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't get on your phone. It won't Don't be too happy about that. That's yeah. right. Yeah, try, try and do that in mm. real time. I remember yeah, um, probably six months ago, I went for a massage like near where I live in London. And um, I went in and it, you know, it's got the little hole for the face. And the girl said to me, um, uh, can you switch your mobile off? And I said, look, I already did. I said, do you ne actually need to tell people that? And she said, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people put their face in the hole <laughs> and they take their arms and they go around and they're texting while they're getting a massage. Yeah. And I remember thinking, are you kidding me? She said, no, I, we would I literally have to tell people. And I went, wow, that's, I know. <laughs> I just thought, wow, that's yeah. a bit scary, a bit scary. So yeah. going back to, men and valentine's day what do you i mean you've talked about the giving what about you receiving is there things that you like to receive well again it's just it's down to the thoughtfulness but to me it's about it would be about my you know partner's day that's okay. what i would focus on okay you know, it would be it'd be nice to get some nice surprises yeah of course it would yeah you know, just because you wouldn't expect it no you know, maybe that's sort of you know a bit medieval or whatever but as, yeah. as a guy might not necessarily expect. So how much nicer would that be? Yes. You know, but if, I think, but I it's think just Jason, a consideration. I don't think women know what to get men for Valentine's day. That's the problem. Like yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what, what I won't say all men because all men are different, but what would you consider a really great Valentine's gift? Well, again, it comes down to the listening. It comes down to, you know, that into that individual. Mm. So in females are really good at picking up on things as well. So it might be something totally off the cuff. Yeah. That we've mentioned before it might even be something as unromantic linked to say technology we might yes. want that new set of headphones <laughs> or that new iMac or or some little bit of technology that we're into at the time it might yeah. be you know we have a passion for something like going out on our bike and it might be a new set of lights or something we're very yeah. much kind of into that or it might just be something small to go well you know I appreciate you and I support you Yes. And, and there's some sort of appreciation or, or support that mm. would also be nice as well because it's, it is about the thoughts. Yeah. It is about, so to get nothing at all 
Mm. It's not about getting nothing. Mm. It's that that person hasn't considered you. Yes, yes. It's not about the gift. It's not about what mm. you end up with. It can be, you know, to me, like I said, if it is that chocolate bar, yeah. at least there's been your thought process. Mm. At least there's been something. So yeah. to me, yeah. it's, it is finding out about what that other puts, you know, what that other person likes, what their mm. needs and desires, or what would be something thoughtful. And it goes both ways. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. good. It's good to hear. I mean, I think this is such a, you know, it's almost like women kind of look around at each other and go, we should know, but we don't, you know? So just hearing you talk about this, that it is about things that are important to you. And it could be, like you say, just a particular brand of chocolate bar. It doesn't yeah. have to be, you know, or a sausage roll made from the local bakery. Cause you know that yeah. your partner loves the homemade sausage rolls That's or whatever it, it is. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, exactly that. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's good. This is going to be good information, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give the good information from a guy's perspective. No, you know? it, is, it is good. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, whether you're in your twenties, thirties, forties or fifties, Valentine's day comes around every year. That's <laughs> right. Got to, yeah. You got to deal with it. You know, at some That's point it. you got yeah. to, I, there was a guy I interviewed, um, and he used to buy his mum something. And I thought, wow, oh, I, never, nice. I never even would have thought of that yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As, an, as an option, you know? So yeah. it's like people do it in different ways and you get good ideas from hearing how other people do it. So I like yeah. the listening. I like the listening. Listen to yeah. what's happening along through the year and then see if you can yeah. you know, just give something well, not monetarily significant, but meaning significant. Well, yeah, it could be you, you could have met in a cafe. Yeah. And you go back to that original cafe. Yeah. So you're just having a cappuccino, whatever the case yeah. is, but you've gone back to that place. So, you know, uh, sort of episodic memories, semantic memories, they all come flooding back. All those mm. emotions come flooding back. You know, it can refresh and kind of reset the romance, as it were. Yeah. By taking some back to that, someone back to that, con, you know, that, within that context. Yes within that place of where, you know, kind of all began or where they had those, you know, real high emotions for each other and everything else. So yeah. even to bring it back to that, to me, if somebody took me back to a cafe, you know, and I'd be, wow. Even if we were having a cappuccino, that would, mm. that would, have, that would have a real impact. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's lovely. That's lovely. It's good to hear that. It's good to hey. hear that. <laughs> yeah. You know, why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? So talking a bit about you and, and meaningful work, because I mean, from what you and I talked about a little bit, you know, when we were chatting prior to recording, you seem to have had quite a, a varied, <laughs> Yeah. like, are you someone who doesn't really like being boxed into nine to five Monday to Friday? Well, what I would say is, is I like to do things with a passion. Yes. If you can lead with a passion, mm. you know, and I know as in business, there's an element of, you know, money side of things that's trailing behind. Yeah. If you do some, something with a passion, you really yeah. come across authentic and you really mm. care and you can empathize with, you know, who you're working with. That has yeah. a value. And yes. value, you know, is absolutely everything. It's like when I was doing the, in, really into the fitness, into the personal training, yeah. and I did a documentary for Sky One. Now, okay. I don't know if many people know about, you know, well, Sky TV is quite popular these days. Yep. Um, so I was on Sky One for a documentary called A Year to Save My Life. Okay. And so they hired me as a personal trainer for the yep. year. For and the year? For the year. So wow. I was uh, butted up with a guy who was uh, called Sandy. He was like 35 stone. Okay. So, over, you know, so that is a mindset. So kind of over the year, lost about... 10 stone. Um, so that was quite an interesting project that I did. And yeah. when I, when I work with, you know, people that are kind of obese, cause that was like one of my USPs. Yeah. It was like, what's going on here? People just don't eat and get to, you know, obese. This kind of something's gone on mm. traumatic event or something. What's going on? Yeah. So I do, I do a process called talk and train. Okay. Where I train somebody you know, easy movements. Let's start at the beginning. Really got to find their baseline and then talk and train. So what's going on? So it's like treatment at the same time as exercise. Okay. They're also talking to me at the same time we're doing exercises as well. Mm. 
So we're getting the information and we're exercising. So there's other things where I do where obviously I just do the talk side of things where I have clients where I just get through to the subconscious, asking yeah. certain questions through what I've learned and everything else like that and get into mm -hmm. the true meaning of what's really going on. And what's making the person eat. Yeah, what's making mm. a person eat or, mm. you know, even if it isn't obesity, someone in life, if they're stuck, if they're, yeah. they've got internal conflicts, they've got limiting beliefs, yeah. they're not, everybody's got this untapped potential mm. of what they could really achieve. And um, it's getting through. And when we're dealing with just the conscious mind, we're only thinking a thick it very thin layer of our capability. So it's how do we break through and get through to the subconscious? Mm -hmm. and really get out all those thoughts, all those desires, smash the limiting beliefs and really get what we want. And mm. it comes back to relationships as well. Yeah, yes. It's finding out what are our yeses and what are our no's? Mm. What are the deal breakers? What do we really want and what do we really not want? Yeah. And, and then there's an element of what, you know, what I'm willing to, you know, kind of tolerate or mm. I'm willing to work with. Because yes. there's like a, an 80 20 rule. You know, 80% of my yes is in my nose, and 20%, you know what? I've got to give on that mm. because that's a partnership for you. Yes. Independency, independency, interdependency. And that really, you know, that's the way I look at it. I think, what are mm. my yes is? What are my no's? Mm. And what's my 20% of? I've got to give on that because yeah. no, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. So it's going to be that 20%. There's so, I've got so many questions I want to ask you. Got to <laughs> okay, firstly, let me go back a little bit. Okay. The, the documentary you mentioned, is there a link to yeah. that that I can put down below for people to have a look at? I'm not too, that was quite a while ago. So I don't know. I'd have to look into that myself. But the, okay. thing, the show was called A Year to Save My Life. Yep. The guy was called Sandy. Yes. You've got um, a front man personal trainer for it, which is called um they brought him over from america but he wasn't too much on the show um as in dealing with the actual person yeah so i dealt with the person i was kind of the secondary personal trainer who spent five days a week a year with this guy wow. the actual personal trainer like this kind of celebrity personal trainer at the time yeah just saw him a, a few days in the year so um yeah he was called uh, the, the main trainer was called jesse pavelka um, okay. this american guy but I was the personal trainer who spent the whole, whole year. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, you see me on, see me on the video. Great. Yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Jason. The, That's okay. Um, there's a lot of people that watch the ch my channel that do just looking at weight loss stuff. And, and yeah, yeah. I think if there's something, you know, anything inspiring that they can go and have a look at, I think that's always great. So definitely we'll see if we can track down a link and we can put it down below. Yeah. Um, the second thing I wanted to ask you, what do you think is one of the best ways to change beliefs? Okay, so a belief, I always say a belief is something you believe in that isn't necessarily true. Yeah. So first of all, write that belief down. Yes. And sometimes the belief will be, everybody says that I'm clumsy. Yep. And I like to go, right, who have said that? Who said that you're clumsy? Because people like to label themselves mm. and other people like to label them as well. Especially if it's from childhood, it's yeah. the stigma sticks with them. Mm. So first of all, I'd say, well, who, who said you were clumsy? Yeah. And they'll, they'll normally bring it down to one person and one time they did something mm. and that has stayed with them. I said, well, are you clumsy or did you do something clumsy? Yes. There's a difference. Yeah. Because if you do something clumsy once or twice, does that actually make you clumsy? Were you born with a clumsy gene? Mm. <laughs> no. No. Exactly. You're not born with a clumsy gene. Mm. So who's told you? When was it? Because the thing is, the rest of it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You've now labeled yourself. And it's the yeah. same with people who say, I'm fat. I go, right. Are you fat or have you got fat? Yes. Because if you've got fat, you can get rid of fat. Mm. You're not fat. Mm. You've got fat. If you do regular exercise and look after what you eat, mm. you're going to get in shape. So mm. you won't be fat. Yes. 
so you've got fat you're not fat mm. you've really got to get rid of these labels yes that you've given yourself mm. i remember when i first start, started studying and, and learning about uh the law of attraction there was mm -hmm. a woman well she's a woman she's it's called abraham hicks and she described a belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over yep. and then it becomes a dominant thought and then it becomes a belief. And I thought, oh, that's such a nice, simple way of describing it. So to change the belief and you rewind back, you've got to then change the, the, the dominant thought and then you've got to look at what am I thinking over and over and over. So it's doing affirmations I think is incredibly helpful, but yes, I think tracing it back to where it began, if you yeah. can find it is helpful to unlock where the beginnings of it. Began. Yeah. Or find, or find some evidence. Yeah. You know, it is about finding some evidence. It is about writing that belief down yes. and then, and then saying, well, where's the evidence to support that? Yes. Exactly. Who said it? When did it happen? Mm. Is it still happening now? Yeah. Is it happening this moment? Yeah. Cause the chances are it's not happening this moment. Yeah. But you're and still, you're still doing it that's right yeah um, there's 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 you know because there's um and I, you know your um your viewers will probably know there's freud and he said these traumatic events stay with us for the rest yeah. of us like because we drag it through but there's yeah. another guy called alfred adler and he says no don't drag it through your life mm. they're dots of things that have happened yes leave the dot there because mm. it happened then at that moment Mm. It's not continuing to happen, mm. but you've got to recognize it. And yes. Break it down. Because yeah. it, it's, if you don't recognize it, the past is still alive in you today as the experiences that you keep re, you know, regenerating. That's right. Yeah. Through, and especially you see that in relationships again yeah. and again and again and again, you're doing, and I think using as an example, because because I'm working with people every day, the thing that comes up again and again and again is people wanting to get love from someone. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are feeling unloved, which comes from childhood somewhere, something's happened, then you go forward and you get fixated on someone and then you think, okay, they're the source of my supply of love. You end up in so much trouble with that and anguish because you are thinking love is over there. And I yeah. do, I do a lot of my coaching on that one thing. Yeah. Love is not over there. It's no. over here. And yes. I'm not here to try and get it from someone. I'm here to give it out. And then I'm a better partner for people. So using that as an example, what do you think is effective when you are someone that has this thing of feeling unloved from childhood and you're going forth into relationships as an adult? what things do you think would be helpful in that situation? Well, when, when you talk about that childhood, you got attachment theory and you look at the relationships with your parents. Yeah. And there's four different types of attachment theory. It's ideally you've got parents who give you that independence where they kind of support you in you what you want to do. They don't necessarily tell you, but they, they support you. So as a young child, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. That's great. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. And you make them their own little person, their yeah. own little independent person. Mm. But knowing that they've got the support and the love there when they need it. Yeah. So if they go out the comfort zone a little bit, I mean, you know, parents are there or, you know, whoever's there yes. to support them. And then you've got, then you've got a three other types. You've got the ones where sometimes parents want them to be independent and not give any support, right? You just need to get on with it. Yeah. Then there's the ones who are over smothering. They can't do anything. The child can't do anything because they're too controlling over them. Yeah. And then you get the third type, which is, oh, come here. I'll support you. No, I've not got time. Mm. So you've got this push pull. Yeah. And in each, in each of those three, as a child, you're trying to work this out. So it's very confusing yes. and, it, and it follows it through for the rest of your life. Mm. And then depending on those three, if you're in one of those three, you're either right. I don't want to be too pushy. So I'll stay aloof. And yeah. the other person's like, well, you don't seem to be into this. And then you've got the one where you, you know, is controlling. So 
You want to be in, you want to be controlled. You're, you're smothering the other person. Mm. It's too much. Yeah. And then you've got the push pull where you like, you don't, well, should I do that? Should I not do that? So the questioning, but if you're in that first one where you've really got that independence, you've got that in psychology, internal yeah. locus of control, yeah. that inner strength within you. And you're not so affected by the externals. Mm. You know, it's the internals that you're really focused on. Yeah. So you become a magnet as opposed to something that repels. Yes. So it is, it is. But the good thing is, is that you can focus on that mm. internal locus of control because that correlates to high self-esteem. Mm. So it's knowing who you are. Yes. It's going, what do I want? What do I accept? Mm. And this is another one of my points of value. Your, you value yourself. What will you accept from others? And what won't you accept? Yeah. Again, a, an exercise is just to write down. What will you accept? What won't you accept? And then you know the boundaries. So if you're being treated well, you're like, yes, this is what I like. Yeah. You know what you like. If you get that, this is what I don't accept. Because when people first meet each other, you know, there is a negotiation of what I'll put up with, what you'll put up with. <laughs> and if you know what you won't, yeah. then you can go, hey, hang on. Mm. That's, not, that's not me. Mm. I'm, not in, I'm not in it for that. Mm. you know let's talk about this mm. and it sets a good foundation yeah and if you like it again it's i really like that mm. thank you that, that's really considerate yeah. really, so you can reinforce that the other person doesn't have to second guess them yes but i think sometimes when people meet each other they try and adapt to what they think the other person wants in a person and yeah. they lose their identity well, and I think from what I've observed from the work I do now is people accept that when they're feeling unloved and they don't want someone to leave them. That's, that's what starts yeah. that going. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's so it. You know, when you're already void. afraid of being abandoned, it's like you're already then accepting behavior that creeps in that you wouldn't accept naturally or normally because you're feeling like, if I don't take this little bit of love I've got here, I might not get any more. And it comes That's from right. that. It's coming from that. Yeah. 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 Mm. And it leaves, you know, when someone leaves, it's loss. Yes. And, and you've got to think to yourself, is it the person or is mm. it the situation I don't like? Yeah. What is it? This, you know, and what I mean by that is, is that that person might not be the nicest person, but because they're leaving, are mm. we dealing with the, are we dealing with the loss? Yeah. And we're dealing with the void it creates. Yeah. Or we're actually dealing with the person that we're losing. Exactly. There's, there can be two different things going on. Mm. And that's hard to see when you're in the middle yes. of the emotion of all that. Yeah, because there's a phrase from Pascal, which is, the heart has its reasons, which reason knows not of. Yes. We're in that logic, <laughs> you know, we're in that emotional mindset. Yeah. And our friends are going, what? Or worst case, you eventually leave them and they go, why didn't you do that before? And you yeah. say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, I could see that. I knew yeah. that. You, know? We're you, so, think, wow. we can, you can so easily see it in others, but when it's you locked into some emotional situation. Emotion. Yeah, forget it. Uh, it's can. very difficult. You know, yeah. I think there was one um, lecturer at uni said it's like knitting fog. <laughs> That's a good visual. That's a good. What's <laughs> going on? I've got, I've got nothing going on. Here. I've got nothing going on. <laughs> What's going that's on? a good visual. <laughs> nothing to work with. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. What do you think, like in your own relationship timeline, what do you think that you've got better at? Uh, I think it's the listening side of things. And knowing me as well. Yeah. And again, you know, it really is what I'll accept, what I won't accept, mm. knowing me. Yes. You know, I've got my yes boxes and my no boxes. You know, I practice kind of what I preach as well. Mm. So, you know, I'm looking at it for those things. But I also understand there's an emotional side. You know, it's mm. not just, right, there's that, there's that, there's that bit. I'm good to go. Yeah. There is that, there is that emotion. And it really is because um, I studied some uh, stoic philosophy as well. Yeah. And that really talks about handling your emotions as opposed to your emotions handling you. Mm. That's key. That's, that's, <laughs> that sounds like two that's simple key. sentences and that's a big 
lifetime's work, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Because we catastrophize. We do. We get into a situation and we think worst case scenario. All the time. Even, yeah, when it's not even happened. Yeah. And most of the time it doesn't actually happen. So it is bringing it back mm. to the here and now, breaking it down. And I think yeah. catastrophizing focuses so much on what we can't do. Yes. But I'm a big believer in what can we do? Yeah. Okay, situation is that, you know, you have your emotional breakdowns or everything goes through your mind and everything. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do from here? Yes. Catch your breath. Catch yeah. your breath. Catch Because you know you're in it. If you mm. do something then, you're in trouble. Exactly. It is yeah. a case of catch, you know, counting to 10. <laughs> And going, right, okay, take a breath. You know, take yeah. some hints from your meditation. Do something. And then do yeah. something. That interrupts it. And yeah. then come back. Exactly. Then yeah. it's the stimulus pause response, isn't it? Wouldn't it be just such an amazing thing that when something happens, your head instantly goes to best case scenario? I mean, oh, we yeah, are so, <laughs> you know, like I just think there, there has to be a point where you because we instantly go this way, negative, worst case scenario. Yeah, and yeah. we're so yeah. good at that. Yes. So good at that. And I'm sure, I know. and I do know in my own life, I've got better at doing best case scenarios. Not quickly, yeah. not while I'm in the middle of it. Do I do it faster than I used to? Yes. Do I do it, yes. you know, every single time? No. But there is at least the thought that best case scenario exists somewhere yeah, yeah. at some times. And I think the fact that you know that and that you know you go left and take worst case scenario route every time something happens, you go, okay, well, that's repetitive, habitual, negative thinking. I've practiced and I'm excellent at that. Yeah. So there is a, there's the other side of the coin I could be excellent at as well. Exactly. The beauty is, is the brain cannot focus on two things at the same time. Yeah. Don't multitasking isn't focus. It's the no. divided attention. It is. It's yes. divided attention. Oh, yeah. You know, and and you know, one of my journeys in life is I was challenged at one point with the can do, can't do scenario. I was doing very well for myself, portfolio properties. I was driving around in a Ferrari. Yeah. And then I lost the lot. Okay. Boom. Gone. Bad business choice. Gone. I got up the next day. I was like, right, what can I do? This was quite a few years ago. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah. I set my plan out on can do. You know, at the time I had pennies in a jar and I was driving around in this 400 pound Honda Prelude. It was red <laughs> and all the panels were so many different colors. I was like, this isn't red on this side. You know, it's kind of pink on that side. <laughs> it was, um, you know, I phoned my friends and I was like, yeah, well, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge at the moment. Yeah. You know, my, fr my friend was like, I'm down to my last Bentley. My friend's, I'm looking at a Lamborghini. And I'm like, I'm driving a 400 pound on the prelude right now. You know? <laughs> With different colored panels. Oh, That's fantastic. Yeah. And I set my plan. I had a plan, you know, and got back on my feet. Yeah, got back on my feet from that, you know, obviously all my qualifications and successes that I've had from that. Yes. But, you know, and I, and I think that's what makes me the person that I am. I think it gives me the right to tell other people because I've been there. Yes, I've been there and I've come <laughs> back from it. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of life's challenges to go, right. OK, well, it's all right me telling people, but what have I done? Whoops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hello. Hello. <laughs> We're back. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what have yeah. I what challenges have I had then yeah and I've and that was a big one you mm. know going through all that luxury and everything else so and can I um can I ask you Jason when you went from that moment where the wheels fell off badly <laughs> yeah when you look back at the say month leading up to that what happened in your mind well, what, was um, there a decline in, was it fear? What was going on that that happened? Well, I think my survival instinct is what can I do? Yeah. And, you know, I kind of, for, um, you know, the decision, it was going to happen over six months um, when this place was going to wrap up. So, so I seen, you know, so I knew I, I wasn't too sure, but I had an idea and I forced, you know, could foresee it actually coming. 
and what, it the was disaster? the disaster yeah 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 okay so um so and you knew you knew you were gonna like lose everything because everything was financially linked to this one this one business um you know that they were they were all interlinked one way or another yeah and um and i just thought to myself okay okay well it is what it is mm. it is what it is I'm breathing, I'm healthy, you know, yeah. I've got this between my ears. If I've yeah. done it once before, I can do it once again. Yeah. So what do I need to do? What can I do? Let's mm. start writing things down. Yeah. And, and, and going, right, I'm in this moment. Mm. Because it's about, that's something that's going to happen. Yeah. But how do I, you know, but it's, it's not, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Because although that's kind of financial, it's, it's not, that's something financial over there. I'm still yeah. over here. Yes. I'm still me. I've still yeah. got, you know, that strength, you know, and everything else yeah. that I need to work on. Why am I letting something that mm. isn't within me yeah. affect me? Because the way it's going to get in, is going to get in through here. Yes. Yeah. And if it affects the, you know, the thoughts in your brain, obviously that chemical release, it will create, you will be depressed. And then you'll get sick. Yeah. And then you'll get sick and then yeah. you can't do anything. Then about you can't it. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to prepare. You need to go right. And then in this mm -hmm. needs to be, what can I do? Because if you're focusing daily on things that you can do, one yeah. that sets you up good mentally anyway, mm. but then you're so focused on things that you've got to check and tick off and get done. You're not focusing on, on the negative. And the yes. good thing is, is then you can sleep at night because you know what? You go, I'm in this position, but I've done all I can do today. Yes. I'm doing something about this. Yeah. Because I think the worst thing is, is when you sit down and you do nothing about it, mm. then you can go, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah. You know, is that taking action? That's the key. Yeah. But it is about, it is about the universe. It is about giving out, you know, emitting that aura, that positive frequency, which is measured through fMRI scans. We do emit a frequency, but we can emit positive or negative. Mm. That's up to us. Yeah. You know, and it is giving it out there. And then other people pick up on that. Yes. And you think, right, if you're getting on with things in such a you know, situation like that, other people are drawn to you because they're like, wow, this guy's on it. He yeah. had all that, but he's back and he's on it. And he's actually working on what he can do. That's mm. quite contagious then because you find people want to help you, want to support yeah. you. And, you know, you get respect for that as well. Yeah. And then you winch yourself out at 1% yeah. a day. You just kind of, yeah, that's. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's, not, it's not anything you want to go, oh my God, I lost it all. That's, that's hard. Yeah. You know? And sometimes you don't want to admit that for shame or embarrassment or whatever mm. the case is. Mm. But it's life's journey. And yeah. what I know is, is everybody has their hard luck story. Yeah. No one gets a green card. Yeah. It's sometime in someone's life, they're going to have it tough. Yeah. And I think to be relatable, to be able to talk to people and go, oh, mm. yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Can I, I ask, can how old were you when that happened? Um, that was, oh, Lord, let's have a look. Where do I go was that now? I think it's about 10 years, something like okay, that. Okay, so it's quite well, um, but fairly young, which is good because it gives you time to <laughs> regroup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was something... Something like that, I can't even You're remember. Late, well, you know you... what? I've done that Freud thing where I put it so far at the back of my mind and like <laughs> forgot about it. Excellent. On. <laughs> yeah, so it might have been even sooner than that. I'm just Whoa. trying to, yeah. Yeah, it might have been in the single figures, but yeah, still, yeah, lovely. happened. Lovely. Yeah. So, wow, that's, whew. It's a shocker. Yeah, it would have been. I mean, it's, yeah. it's shocking to hear it from this side. So you, you living it would have been another whole thing. But mm. yeah, like you mm. say, you know, we've all got something that's totally leveled us out. Yeah. But one must taste sour to appreciate sweet. So when you get the you good stuff. That, you got to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I can't. I don't know if I can claim that as mine. <laughs> But, um, but yes. I know, you know, it makes things all the much better. It does. You know, it you does. start to appreciate. I mean, I've always appreciated things anyway. And yeah. I think because I don't take things for granted and yes. I go, right, okay, well, you know, I think there's, there's a phrase which is if you think life is going to be easy, it will be very hard. Yeah. But if you think it's going to be hard, you'll find it easier. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So the the modeling stuff because that that it's almost like you've done completely unrelated things i know like i don't yeah. like often creative people do creative things and conservative people choose business finance and all these other yeah. things but you've kind of got a bit of a crossover in but you've got a foot in both worlds yeah the commonality is challenge ah i love a challenge you know, I like to achieve things and I like to see other people achieving things. I'm a, you know, a great believer in that. I got a client the other day, a new client. And, um, and I said, you know, and they meet me up every so often. I said, text me, let me know about the journey. I'm on the journey with you. Your success is my success. Yeah. I love to see people achieve and I love to achieve myself. So I suppose each one of these was, I, I mean, I've never been on a motorbike before. I'd never been on a motorbike before ever. Yeah. yeah. I, th I thought, you know what? If I get stuck in America, I need to jump on a Harley and drive <laughs> off if I need to. I don't know where I got that thought from. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I took a three day course. On how to ride a Harley. On a ride a <laughs> motorbike, it's not quite a Harley. And, uh, and then, yeah, I was riding around on this, this, big motorbike yeah you know just three days later i'm there i'm you know I, I, I'm, I'm not i didn't even know they did courses for that three days <laughs> this was a while ago this was in 2001 so this was a while ago in and england you, in england yeah yeah and wow. if you and if you take your test on the bigger bike because yeah. at that age i could take it then i can ride whatever i want and i remember going into this bike shop and there was a red one i'm not in i'm not in real bike you know i'm not really an enthusiast for bikes yeah but it was red there's this yeah. ducati 996 at the time and the guy said to me he said how long have you been riding motorbikes this is like a thousand cc this is like almost like a 200 mile an hour bike yeah i said passed my test three days ago and i was on a bike for three days he's like no 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 you can't buy that bike he said it's so fast but it's again, it's like life. It's about control. I phoned my, um, my driving instructor up and I said, this guy won't let me buy this bike. He said, Jace, it will only go as fast as you turn the accelerator. Yes. If you want to buy it, buy it. And that's life, isn't it? It goes as fast mm. as you turn the accelerator. If you really want to go for it, then you can go for it. If you want to take it easy, then go for it. Then you can do that as well. So you're in control ultimately. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't fall off. Yeah. Or let anybody crash into you. That's the mm. best thing. Yeah. 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 The analogy continues. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, so, um, yeah. So, you, I mean, I, you know, there's so many bits and pieces to your meaningful work. I mean, which, which part would you like to mention? What, what's, re what are you really, when you look at what you've done up until now, what's kind of the highlights for you? Well, my, my thing now really is um, when, when I'm with a client, it's to reach into the untapped potential. It's what are those limiting beliefs? Establish those. What are that's, what's the internal conflict? What's the conversation going on in people's heads? And you know, why, what's stopping them from really doing what they want to achieve? So is that, your, is that your meaningful work? Is that what you really love to do? It, re it? it, it really is now. Yeah. You know, getting into, you know, in, into that and tapping that potential, unlocking people that are stuck as well. Yes. And that could be whether it's in their health, whether uh -huh. it's in their mind, whether it's in their job or business, yeah. you know, in relationships, w what's going on. Because it, it, it all crosses over. Because it's very interesting yeah. when you start to talk to somebody about, they may even come to me on a business level, mm. but then start talking to me on their personal level. Mm. And there is, there's always that overlap, link. There's sure. always that overlap. Even if it's predominantly business, there's always that overlap mm. for personal too. I agree. Um, so to be able to, you know, cater for those, because um, at university, I used to do a lecture on the application of academia to the working world. It's like, how do we take psychology and, and out of a book? Yes. And how do we apply it to real lives? Mm. So, you know, I had the privilege of doing um, lectures uh, because the head professor's chap said, look, we read the books, we do the you know, uh, academia and the research, but we're not necessarily out there also applying it. 
Yes. But Jace, you're, you're applying it. You're doing it. You're applying it. We talked to you a lot. We'd like you to, you know, mm. come and explain the crossover and the application of that as well. So it does. So someone might predominantly come in for the business kind of thing, have mm. a little, you know, this 80, 20 again, yes. or they might come into their 80% of right. You know, I mean, I've had people say, I want to work with you because I want to know how I think. Mm. I want to know what's going on in here. I want to know how I tick. Mm. And so with some good questions, mm. you get the good answers. Yeah, you do. And it yeah. is interesting working out the mechanics of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, you're really my, in the, you, well, you kind of, Yes, you're in a teaching role, but it's, it's different. It's almost like you're in the relief business. Yes. You're yeah. really in the relief business. How can I pick out parts of your thinking and then somehow play it back to you so that it falls into place and then you get the relief to then go forward and to do, you know, to whatever it is That's that it. you really have been stuck on. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. It's about unlocking them. It's about, you know, so they're not stuck anymore as well. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that, that's really rewarding. And my philosophy mm. was if I can get somebody doing just that bit more than they were doing before, yes. that's progression. Mm. And especially with, you know, the training with people who are obese, it's like, right, what more can you do than you were doing before? And we can build on that. We can build on that. And before you know it, there's this compounding interest. Yes. And there's this progression as well. Yeah. And it's the same again with the mind. If we can, you know, get someone doing breaking out. So there's a habit that they do in the morning. If we can add another habit to that habit, then these things start to grow and develop. And that's how you create that good lifestyle. But yeah. um, so, so through these different methods, um, you know, it really is nice to see people changing their lives, really, you know, and breaking out yeah from from some mental restrictions yes that they've got but ultimately for me the passion is seeing people achieve and me being part of that journey as well being involved in it it's very rewarding to know that someone's really changed their life obviously they're doing most of the work but i've had some influence in that and that's the passion that's, that's yes. the reward yeah. as well and yeah, do, you, do you show them a picture of your little red car oh <laughs> I don't know if it's in existence. I don't, I think when I part exit in, the back wheels were coming off. So, oh, yeah. I'm really glad you shared I know. that because it's, oh, so, Lord. it's so good to remember those moments. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't soon after which I could afford to have all the nice cars again. Yes. So but I'm boy, a, I, don't I you like appreciate them 10 times more oh, because you've driven no. that. You go, well, I know. Never forget that car. No, I won't forget that car. I won't oh. Very good in the snow, though. I don't know why, but it was yeah? very good in the snow for some reason. What, what year bizarre. was it? What year was it? Was, I think it, what was year was that? Oh, my Lord. I can't even remember what year. It was old. What, it like was old. 80s and 90s? Older, yeah. older. Um, yeah, must have been around about that. Around yeah, it that. was, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, an, it was a very old car. <laughs> but it, you know, it kind of, it worked up until the point then, yeah. Then I, I did manage to park exit in for a nice, nice Mercedes sports car. So I was, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not like the material, you know. It's just, yeah. it's just not. Nice. I just like my car. Yeah, yeah. But, I do you know, too. It's, I do yeah, too. I yeah, to admit, I do too. Yeah. I know, but it's nice knowing that you know, with or without these materialistic things, you've got it here. You've got that strength because you can always get the externals if the yeah. internals are working. Yeah. You know, in, internals are working well as well. Yeah, and also so, and I, just knowing that you're not precious that you have to have it. You know, like it's that's like, right. You know, if that, I have that's to it. be without it, if I have to walk, yeah. catch the London buses, I have to say, are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that keen on the tube, I have to say. I no, I don't. Tube, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've got. I'm. I'm you know, being in London, Ubers, I'm on the Ubers, uh, yes. you know, oh, I'm yes. loving those, you know, I just like watching the video and they're just I know. turning up and everything. How great is that it's app just with the little it's car? It's just so good. Oh, I just is. love that. It's yep. so good. I love coming that. Back, coming back to like the relationships and that inner strength, really. And that's yes. what magnetizes other people. It does. You know, because they're drawn to that initially. And mm. I think so many people, because they adapt to the other person, then they yeah. lose their identity. And that person says, well, you've changed. Yeah. 
So it's really knowing who you are. Mm. And, and then and that holding it. Yes. You know, say if you've got your friends, you still go see your friends because yeah. uh, sometimes drop off. You like really want to be with this person. Yeah. Then you stop doing your hobbies. You stop yeah. seeing your friends and then, and then you're solely on that person. And that's a big mistake. I think yeah. I, that, I'm glad you brought that up because I see that. And you know, I did that in my twenties and thirties too, like everybody else. And it's like, wow, when you realize that your circle got smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where when your relationship broke up, you'd alienated yourself from your friends. And then it was like, yeah. oh, so, oh, so you're back now. Oh, yeah. And, and then yeah. You, you just don't look very good <laughs> at no. that moment. And, and I remember reading that Men are from Mars and Men are from Venus years yeah. and years ago. Yes. And the dynamics at the start of the relationship Whereas, you know, the guy kind of works hard to get the girl mm. and then the girl's like, yeah, okay, well, you know, she stays to who she is and all the rest of it. Then the guy wins the girl, this is yeah. in the book, and then the girl drops everything yeah. to be with the guy, let's say, or vice versa even. Yeah. And the other person's like, where's the exclusivity? Where's mm. the, you know, where's the mystery? Where's the elusive kind of that kind of thing, mm. which was what the chase kind of drew him in. Yes. And then... And then that's it. Then they've got them. Then the guy in this case then starts to pull away. Exactly. The girl's like, well, hang on a second. He was really into it. He was chasing me down. Yeah. Now the guy's going away. Mm. So then start calling more and more. The guy's like, I don't, this is getting a bit too heavy for me. Yep. He then goes this like elastic band effect. Yeah. Then, then, wow. And when women make up their mind and go, okay, I've had enough. Yeah. Then there's no cause. And yeah. the guy's going, hang on a second, what's yeah. going on here then? Yeah. Come, he then does that thing where he comes back at force going, no, I really like, he realizes he really likes the girl. And she's like, no, nope, too late. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you've messed me around. Yeah. And um, so if we can get a balance, you know, yes. and then you've got a good relationship that could have been there. Yep. But to stay who you are, yeah. You go, no, I'm on, you know, if it's a girl's, I'm on a girl's night. I've got, yeah. you know, I'm going to the gym. I do this and mm. that. The guy will be attracted to that of course. i mean coming from a guy's side of things yeah like, i agree good. you've got your independence you've got your thing going on yeah. that to me is attractive exactly i agree and with i've you. got I'm my really... things going on too yeah. i'm glad and then you, you brought got... it up i'm glad yeah you brought it up. independent yeah. independent yeah. interdependency where you support each other's independence mm -hmm. as well yeah. So you go, you know what's really cool? You go to the gym and I'm glad, you know, you're seeing your friends. You've always got something to chat about. They're supporting what you do again and you can come together. And yeah. what I talk about this coming together is you're in your own safe place. Yeah. Because you've got support from both sides. Correct. And that safe place can really be in the home or it can be in a cafe. It could be wherever you meet. Mm. And you've got that excitement from both people doing their own thing, but coming together as well. Yeah. To support I, each other for what they're doing. I know. It's like the relationship has to be a part of your life, not the whole thing on a pedestal. And I that's think it. that's why I think, and I do think I, I will say this, that women do that more. And why okay. I say that is because I do work with men and women. Women do this more. Okay. So I do think that's what makes a woman emotionally unattractive is that she's revolved her whole life around him. And then it's like, oh, you don't spend enough time with me. Oh, you know, oh, I'm not a priority. And basically you're just saying to this guy all the time, not in those words, but energetically, I'm not a priority. I'm not a priority. I'm not a priority. Mm -hmm. So he kind of goes, yeah, you're not a priority. You're not a priority. You're not a priority because he's emotionally feeling suffocated by you hanging around all the time. So mm -hmm. I do think that's something that women do need to learn because they instantly do that naturally. And it's, it, it just, it completely squashes the joy and the fun of the relationship in a not very long amount of time. Yeah. Because you know, we are attracted to that. Well, me as a guy, yeah. I'm attracted, I'm attracted to that independence. Yep. You know, I'm really attracted to, to that independence. I think there's a phrase now, you know, sapiosexuals where you're attracted to intelligence. Yes. And there is that. And with that independent comes an element of intelligence. Mm. Because there's that strength. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty sexy. You yeah. know, to have a woman who's like independent, doing her thing, and she's got it together. Yeah. That's really attractive. Yeah. You know, yeah, the guy will, we will want to spend more time with exactly. the Exactly. So you we get will. what you want so in we'll the push end. It. 
we will push it we will push it we will push it but ideally the woman stays with yeah. that independent strength of mind exactly. because ultimately like you said if we then get it all then we're like right now we're entertainment's manager what well, we've got to arrange yeah. everything all the time exactly right and then that becomes exhausting well, well, so you're trying to organize say, your own life and then you're trying to, you know, it's like you're looking after a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah it, 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 and, you know, you don't, you don't want to be in that position. You want to be no. equal. Yeah. To me, we want to be equal. For you know? sure. Exactly. So, but that is attractive. That is attractive. But <laughs> the women, you've got to stay strong and go, right, independence. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, strong and independent, like nothing to do with the guy sort of no. thing. This is what I'm doing. There no. is that crossover. Yes. There is that crossover. There is but that crossover. If women make plans with their friends, their family, or who, the, the, you know, I go to the gym on a Tuesday or Wednesday, stick to it. Don't stick break the plans it. to go out with him. That's, I think, a big mistake. Stick to it. I yeah, mean, there is a thing it. where you might want to go, right, I'm going to see the family come along if you want. Yeah. There is an invitation. Exactly. But you're still, but you're still doing it. You're still doing it. And that's a self love, self respect thing. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're still doing it, but you yeah. can, you can, you, you know, I wouldn't say there's nothing, anything wrong in the invitation. There's mm. certain things, you know, to me, you want to go on a girl's night, girl's night. It's acceptable. Of course. Go. Cause there's things you want to talk about. Exactly. And you want to, <laughs> you know, you just want to really the, talk yeah. or eat those little picky food things that men aren't interested in, you know, <laughs> you know like not a proper meal. Like it's just those <laughs> things that women do together that men just go, no, that's not my thing. So yeah, you do some things with your, with the, with the partner and some things with the friend and that's and, right. Yeah. yeah. Keep it going. I'm really glad you brought that up. Cause I'd forgotten about that, that it was a, a thing in relationships and I haven't talked about it. So I'm really glad you brought that up. Cool. Yay. Excellent. Hey. Wow. That hour went fast. Cool. It did. It was Unreal. good. Well, anything talked about jason i'm gonna i'll put you know the links to things below and, fantastic and your, your details because that's what we do we always put people's details so they can talk to brilliant you directly. and um thank you so much for your time that was very informative and just really good mail information brilliant <laughs> brilliant yeah well i'm all i'm all the i'm all the links and all the rest of it i'm doing all that social media stuff so put my name in there you'll you'll track me down i will i will everybody will track me down <laughs> sounds good sounds good brilliant well do you want to say goodbye to everybody jason i want to say thank you thanks for listening you know if you've got to this point with us you know it's absolutely <laughs> been brilliant it's been a pleasure so yeah. i really really appreciate people's time i mean it's always a privilege to take someone's time out of their life i really see it like that so thanks to everybody thanks to you especially thanks for inviting me on i really really enjoyed it beautiful thank you very hopefully much hopefully we'll do some more in the future Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> okay. All, All right, righty. Jason, stay okay. on. We'll say goodbye by ourselves. Bye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the final interview in the series for Valentine's Day, and I will see you in the next YouTube.